Hey, what's up, guys? So now that the dust has cleared a little bit on the recent news with the Season 5 reveal for Street Fighter V, uh, I want to talk about these big Street Fighter VI leaks slash rumors. And of course, the more recent news of Ono uh, leaving Capcom after working there for almost 30 years now uh, with the company. So there is a lot to talk about this video. It's probably going to be long. Um, it's pretty hard to keep it concise, but I kind of want to want to speak freely on this one. I don't want to script it too much. Uh, there's a lot I want to talk about myself. So, you know, kind of strap yourselves down for this one, guys. You might have to watch this in a couple of parts. So let, let's start with, with Street Fighter VI in general. Um, naturally, most of us are ready to move on uh, from Street Fighter V. Not because the game is bad, but more just because we've been, you know, we've been playing it for so many years now. And uh, we want to move on to the next chapter in the series. I mean, especially myself. You know, I've been covering this game for over four years. I've almost made a thousand videos on it, uh, now that I think about it. It's pretty ridiculous. Uh, but, you know, we know something is definitely up uh, with Capcom. Not only, you know, them announcing the fifth final season for Street Fighter V unexpectedly, but the fact the season is stretched so far ahead uh, to fall 2021. It, it's blatantly unplanned, you can tell. There's absolutely no footage of these characters. Uh, besides that weird camera phone footage of Dan, and uh, when we saw the roadmap and we saw how far ahead each of these characters are and how split they are, it's pretty damn clear. So we can all, at least all agree on that, that this was unplanned and, and something to buy Capcom some time. So that kind of ties in here uh, with the recent leak. Now, a leaker by the name Dusk Golem on Twitter claimed the reasoning behind these tweets. And there's a lot to talk about here. I'll start by just reading off the tweet itself. There are a lot of tweets. I'll try to condense it as much as I can, the important ones. But this is the general uh, gist of it. So I, as I quote, As Capcom is trending for Street Fighter stuff, though I'm not really a Street Fighter fan, I can mention I know the reason for the unexpected Street Fighter V season pass. The most basic gist of it is Street Fighter VI was supposed to release next year, but it was not received well internally or with testers. There's this team mechanic the game was too focused on. The director, who was Eno, he later corrects that he meant Ono, got demoted again, and someone else is put in charge to fix Street Fighter VI with an additional year in development. And the new season pass is to buy time for that. There's a bit more to it, but I know talking about this stuff makes people uh, to ask you about it, and I really don't care much about fighting games, though my brother loves to play them. For what it's worth, I've heard the extra year and new director slash fixes and direction they've taken has been doing wonders. And then he literally clarifies that he typed, you know, mistyped and meant Ono, oh and uh, he was the director for Street Fighter VI, but the game didn't come out good. The new director I don't know much about, but I hear she's pretty well known in the fighting game community. Brought some really cool ideas to fix the game with what was there. Okay, there's a lot of information here, a lot of stuff on the tweet. Uh, but first, we should definitely talk about the leaker. Because, you know, the first thing you guys are going to say is, Oh no, no no more leaks, Vesper. Oh no. This is the tarot card and all the recent stuff. Uh, this is not data mining, by the way, as well. This is actual leaks or a rumor, I guess. So in terms of uh, our hidden miss history with Street Fighter leaks, uh, you know, obviously we have to take this with a grain of salt, obviously. Uh, that being said, though, Dust Golem, from what I've been researching, recently has given a lot of information on Resident Evil 8 way before it was announced, actually months ahead, and has been pretty accurate on its description. So he definitely has some info, don't know where, within Capcom, at least with Division 1. So he at least reputable in that sense uh, with Resident Evil 8. So he knows some stuff with Capcom. That's all I can say for that. Uh, but otherwise, of course, we're taking this with a grain of salt. Now, for the tweet itself, assuming this stuff is true or close to true. So the leaker mentions that uh, Ono was the director of Street Fighter VI. Now, a lot of you guys are going to immediately start, uh, you know, correcting this. Uh, but we know that Ono is actually an executive producer at Capcom. Uh, the leaker did clarify this later and explains that a producer role is similar to a director's role, uh, at least for Capcom. I've heard this before myself, actually, with other Japanese devs. And, you know, we can, we can kind of see that, you know, because a lot of people don't even know Ono's position, you know, because all we see is Ono, right? I, I, you know, I talked to a lot of people, they, they think he's just the PR. They think he's just a director. He's just a producer. You know, he, he's kind of all over the place, too. If you look at his positions over the years, 
you know, uh, Ono's been with the company, like I said, for 30 years. So that's, that's not a surprise. But if we look at the actual games, if he were someone who took a more direct role, a director's role with these games, you could definitely see that uh, with these previous games. A lot of his influence and personality has been injected with him, regardless if he's a producer or not. We see, like, even with Street Fighter 4, all the way back to Street Fighter 4, we see the silliness. Characters spinning around, smashing on the screen, weird googly eye faces when they do their ultras. There's kind of a more carefree charm to it. It's very similar to Ono's personality. Uh, it's even got to the point where we see Ono's face on billboards in the backgrounds of some stages, like with Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Uh, we even see uh, Ono's influence, especially with character choices. We know he's a huge Blanca fan, a huge Mika fan. Uh, so we see that a lot uh, in the games with what these choices are. And uh, yeah, and we see the team aspect. We know that he likes this team aspect and he's been pushing it a lot in a lot of these uh, fighting games that Capcom has done. And, you know, this is in other industries, man. This, this is not a surprise either, too. Like, even for movies, guys, uh, the producer can pull a lot of strings, man, even in movies. That's the reason why we have a lot of these mainstream movies. I'm not going to name any movies, but mainstream ones where we have these no-name directors for some reason that have these giant million-dollar productions, and we're like, why is this guy in charge? Because they, you know, they're basically robots, and the producers can pull the strings and tell them to do whatever they want. But, I mean, we're getting off topic here. Let's get back to video games. My point is, is that this is very believable that even though Ono is an executive producer, that does not mean that he does not have a huge influence and in direction the game goes, right? I mean, it's his job to make sure the game does well. So, yes. And there's other rumors with Ono as well, especially on the Marvel side, but I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to go too, too crazy off board with the rumors here. I'm sure you guys are going to be hearing other people's takes on this, and you'll get more information that way as well. So I don't have to basically just keep reciting what everyone else is saying. So another strange thing, too, guys, about Capcom is how much they, they basically hide the directors. I, I mean, you know, I've seen some people go like, look at the, we got these new directors for Street Fighter V, who are these guys? But like, apparently these guys have been the directors always. You know, we've never seen them. Uh, all we see is Ono, and uh, what's the other dude's name? Ayano, the guy who always dress up, dresses up at Chun Li all the time. That guy's the co-producer. So we're seeing the executive producer and the co-producer every time there's a stream, every time there's an event, every time there's an announcement, anytime it's always Ono. Or and Ayano all the time. We never actually see the guys behind the direction of the game, which I think is pretty important, especially when we hear we want to hear, you know, what you know, we want communication. We want to hear why are they designing the game in this direction? Why are they releasing these types of characters? What do they want the game to accomplish? You know what I mean? We want to hear these thoughts, and we don't even get that half the time, especially when we read these balanced patch notes. It sounds like it's just all over the place, right? And now, like I said, now with, with Ono being gone or Ono getting demoted, uh, we've just recently seen with the round table, which was only a couple of weeks ago, actually, we finally get to see these directors and we're like, who, who the hell are these guys? We've never seen them before, you know? So it, it, it's very, very weird. And so anyways, let's get back to the tweet. Now, the next thing about this tweet is that uh, Street Fighter Six was not received well uh, internally or with testers. That's what it said. Internally or with testers. This is very bad. This is, this is big red flag, bad news bears, sound the alarms, bad. That means nobody liked it, okay? It means the people who played it didn't like it, and it means the people that are making it don't like it. That's not good. And that means someone has to be held accountable and something needs to be changed. So they've been, they've been basically saying that this was mainly because of a, a team mechanic on the game that was, that was too focused on. So let me clarify one thing first. Now, when I say team mechanic, you guys are going to immediately think like Marvel, right? From what I'm hearing from the rumor mill, it is not a straight up tag mechanic we're talking about. It's more of a team-based mechanic involving multiple characters. Think um, Fighting Jam. Think King of Fighters, CBS2, CBS1. Uh, it, it actually kind of makes sense, too, with Capcom pushing the Street Fighter League and then them with the team tournaments and adding the team modes like Capcom's trying to test it out, right? They're really trying to push this team thing, and that might tie more into this esports thing because I know Capcom, the whole fighting game division right now is focused on esports, and they're gonna want to keep pushing that. That's the main point of Street Fighter because, frankly, the game just doesn't sell well as their other IPs. It just doesn't. Fighting games are still a niche at the end of the day, and 
esports is an incentive to want to continue pursuing that. And so with this this team mechanics, you know, it it once again this ties in with Ono uh, having a big influence on this game because he's tried this team mechanics for a long time now, ever since he first started uh, with with producing. We we've had uh, Fighting Jam, or is it called Fighting Evolution? No, Evolution I think is the American version. But anyways, Fighting Jam, Fighting Evolution, whatever it's called. Uh, we've had Street Fighter Cross Tekken, who was really tried there, right? Really tried there. And then now we're hearing with Street Fighter VI, you know? So he's been pushing it for a while. And, you know, apparently Ono was given a, a second chance, so to speak, uh, because he was demoted before. And he was given a very direct role on Street Fighter VI. And thus, because of that, he took full responsibility for these issues and therefore was replaced, right? Um, they said it was replaced by a female... Uh, producer, uh, I don't know the name, but from what I'm reading, a lot of people are suggesting it's Midori uh, Yuasa. Okay, and she is pretty well known uh, in terms of I, I think I saw her name under uh, an esports uh, director slash producer. I have to check, but I'm sure Capcom is going to give us more info on that, uh, especially since Ono has announced officially announced his departure. So we'll probably hear more what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, but either way, she is taking uh, control. And uh, like I said, Ono has been demoted before. And now being demoted again for Street Fighter VI. Uh, so that perfectly lines up with what we're hearing with these leaks slash rumors and what we know now with Ono leaving. It's not like he left for no reason, especially if he's in the middle of development of, of a new Street Fighter series. right? We know Ono is very passionate about the FGC, so he wouldn't just leave for no reason. right? He definitely wouldn't be leaving because things are good. So, uh, I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to pretend like I understand Japanese development, but from what I understand, they kind of push you down. Don't exactly fire your ass, but they push you down to the point where there's nowhere to go but, uh, but leave. But I'm not going to pretend to know exactly what happens behind the scenes. So, I'm not trying to, to shit on Ono, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't actually know what's going on. You don't know what's actually going on. We're just relying with what we hear, right? And we, don't, we just don't really know what's going down. So it's, you know, obviously we can't just say he's the sole reason for the problem with all these games. It can't just be all blamed on one guy. That one guy, that's ridiculous. But it is the producer's role. And the producer's role is very important, very stressful. And it's to make sure everyone is doing their job. Everyone is doing their job. They oversee everything, right? And uh, Capcom has been struggling with a lot of recent fighting games for a while now, with many different titles, man, many different titles. Even the smaller titles with the Darkstalkers Resurrection, or we can talk about the Marvel side of things. Like we already, that's already self-explanatory. And like I said, ever since Street Fighter IV, they, you know, they were like so up there with Street Fighter IV, then it's been kind of down and dwindling. And even with Street Fighter V, man, that launch was rough. And there's been a lot of things, too, that we haven't even talked about behind the scenes with Street Fighter V. Uh, they were going in one artistic direction and they kind of just changed gears more than halfway through, right? And now they needed Sony's help to bail them out so it didn't take too long and then it ended up getting rushed, right? So, you know, they've been going through a lot of drama themselves internally. So, but at the same time too, you know, Ono did, we cannot, we have to acknowledge that Ono helped revive the entire fighting game genre, you know, with Street Fighter 4. We have to acknowledge that. We can't just look at the bad. But at the same side, you know, we, we were hearing issues, too, that at the start of Street Fighter 4, there was problems. And there's, there's been a big team effort with that game as well. You know, we've heard a lot about Seth Killian on the American side, helped shape the game up when it was first being developed and helped fix a lot of things. And we also know that Capcom works with Dimps as well. And that's another thing that's kind of behind the scenes that it made, it's really complicated, man. Dimps, um, you know, Dimps handled apparently the programming. Uh, the the play testing, the balancing, you know, Capcom did the art, the characters, and and the game design. It's, it's a mess, man. Like it's like it's like not everything is centered and controlled. And like I said, when you read the balance patch notes and stuff on this game, it, everything's out, uh, like there's no like single direction with these games. And it just I don't know, man. But I think Capcom is starting to get on the right track now, where they're you know what I mean. They're not trying to outsource things as much. They're starting to even use their own engines, right? Now with the RE engine, they're starting to kind of get back in shape. 
Uh, but like I said, it wasn't without the issues over the years, especially uh, on the fighting game side of things. But like I said, it just seems like Ono's kind of, if you, if you just want to point the blame on Ono, there has been a lot of, the ball has been dropped many times, you know. Fighting Jam wasn't doing so well. Uh, that was Ono's take on, on like a Capcom All-Star kind of game. Even the Capcom All-Stars game was canceled before even Fighting Jam, you know. Uh, Street Fighter Cross Tekken was like, that was a slam dunk game. Uh, in my opinion, still the, the greatest fighting game roster ever for any fighting game was Street Fighter Cross Tekken. And somehow that game didn't do well. Somehow. You know, and then the amount of money they put back in to try to fix it. And oh, that was a disaster, right? And like I said, Marvel games aside, and now with Street Fighter V with the issues that game had at launch. So now, you know, if we're kind of running into this loop again with Street Fighter VI, you know, Capcom's going to be like, finally slam their foot down. But like, okay, look, we need a new set of eyes on this project. We need a fresh set of eyes, right? And like I said, if, if Ono was given another chance and he took responsibility, then, you know, he's got to go. They got to, they got to like get at the root and get someone to fix this and make sure we don't have any more problems. You only get so many chances, especially when it comes to big million dollar games like this, you know? So yeah, um, a lot of people, are, like I said, are debating on how much Ono is to blame for all these games and stuff. Uh, but at the same time, nobody is defending, from what I've read, no one's defending Ono that he should stay on Street Fighter V or Street Fighter VI. I don't see anyone defending him on that regard. But there's a lot of people defending on how responsible he is. But like I said, there's no point really talking about it if we don't actually know. We just, we just don't. We're just going off rumors and leaks. So Now, let's continue on with this tweet here. Now, uh, the next part is it explains how uh, Street Fighter VI has been delayed, at least for an additional year, and Season 5 is the buy time for that. Now, do I believe Street Fighter VI was really going to be released next year? I don't even believe that. You know? I don't want to believe that. I don't want to believe that. As much as I want Street Fighter VI to come out right away, I just, I just don't want to believe that. Like, I feel like if Street Fighter VI was going to come out next year, it would have been announced a long time ago. You know? I just can't imagine them announcing it and releasing it so soon. I would have to check the windows for all the Street Fighter titles when they announce it and then release it, but I'm sure it's quite, quite a gap in between. Either way, um, you may look at this as, as something really, really bad, that the game is being delayed and that it had, it had its problems, but you can also look at it as a good thing too. Um, Capcom, this means that Capcom is willing to not rush out the game and gamble. This is very important. This is something that everyone's been asking for. We don't want a retelling of Street Fighter V. We don't want this game to be rushed. We want them to focus on quality and do whatever it takes. And, you know, Street Fighter V was very, very different from when we last saw it. Remember when we first saw Street Fighter V at Capcom Cup when Combo Fing was against Mike and they were playing it? And the, the way the combo system looked, the way the V-Trigger system was, it was, it was a totally different game. Totally different game. A lot can change in a year. The V-Trigger system was much more complex back then. Weird things like Ryu get an extra hit on his fireball every time he activates. You know, the way the activations worked were a lot different. Even when I played it at E3, you couldn't even combo into V-Trigger. Like, it was, it was a lot different, man. And so a lot can change in just that one year, especially when you change a directive role with the executive producer, especially with that. And another thing, too, is that, you know, when, you know when Street Fighter Six comes out, it's expected to last years just like all their fighting games. And it could be tuned afterwards, years after that. So I think the important thing is that Capcom is, is doing what it takes to make sure this game is good. They're doing what it takes, right? They're delaying it, and they're going after big roles and, and changing things around to make sure it's, it's done well. They're not just trying to like throw, roll the dice and be like, hey, just ship it out. And we go through this whole thing all over again. You know, because I was even worried too, because recently with Resident Evil 3's release, even though Resident Evil 3 was polished, bug-wise, in my opinion, like it was polished as a game, it still felt rushed. It felt hollow compared to Resident Evil 2 Remake in terms of content, even though I ended up actually playing Resident Evil 3 longer. But I was afraid that's like, you know, Capcom's going with that the two-year, one-year dev cycles, and they're trying to pump these games out again, right? Like, Capcom always starts to feel themselves when then they up, and they start pumping their games out, and then everything gets saturated again. But, uh, you know, with this roadmap thing, their communication is going back up, which is nice, something we'd like to see, especially when Street Fighter V 
was in development, their communication was actually spot on. It was really, really good, if you guys remember. And uh, yeah, like I said, they're making big moves now. Now, the final part of the tweet here uh, is uh, it says, uh, for what it's worth, I've heard the extra year and new director slash fixes and direction they've taken has been doing wonders. Uh, brought some really uh, and uh, she has brought some really cool ideas to the fix with the game. So he's basically saying that like the game is actually in a good direction now. Like this, what Capcom has decided to do by delaying the year and and changing uh, the producer role has been a good choice so far. So like I said, whoever this new producer is, she has been doing a good job, and that's good. That means like the last thing that we hear of info is that it's going good now. Everything's good. <laughs> so that's that's good news to hear. You know, it's not like it's a mess and they don't know what to do. We might might have to delay it another year, but at least it's 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 the last thing we hear is that it's positive, right? So, you know, after talking about all of this, one of the key things we know now, we know that Street Fighter 6 won't be released for a long time, especially if it's delayed for another year. Uh, which lines up with the Ono interview, actually, that he had before we talked, uh, where we wouldn't be seeing it right at the launch of, of uh, you know, the console generation. I'm sure Capcom really wanted to get at the beginning of that console generation, where there's not too many games. They could have got a lot of free sales with that. But it looks like um, we're not going to see Street Fighter VI until uh, 2022, 23, some, sometime around that, just because Street Fighter V will be worked on until uh, fall 2021. Uh, we might hear an announcement of Street Fighter VI by then, though. So we'll have to see about that. This also tells us that there's no, there's more than likely no hidden fighting game that Capcom is working on. This does line up with the fact that the CPT champion, Red Bull Kumite champion, is not uh, getting uh, a seed for next year, right? As the reigning champion. So this ties in with the Street Fighter VI rumors as well. This makes more sense now. And so, yeah, it looks like they're going straight for a big, you know, AAA game. Um, and, yeah, we'll, we're more, most likely now see Street Fighter, uh, a, a very different Street Fighter, I think, than we're, than we're used to. It's just going an entirely new direction. Um, when I say new Street Fighter, I mean, like, just the tone, I think, is going to feel different. I mean, Ono did work on it for a long time already. But the things that they change, we might see a, a much different tone. I, I feel like we've already seen a different tone with Street Fighter V's uh, Season 5 roster. Just look at the characters chosen. I feel like there's already been an influence on that, on which characters are chosen. With, with Akira and Rival Schools. You know, that was really left field. We're like, huh? That's a little weird. I wonder, you know, if Oni was still with us, would that would be the same? It's, it's not sure, but it sounds for the better. I, you know, I like Capcom taking more risks with these characters and reaching out more there. And yeah, unfortunately with Ono's uh, now, uh, his, de his demotion, he has nowhere else to go but, you know, depart from Capcom. Uh, I think Ono was a great PR. He brought a lot of energy and personality to events. And it was good to, to, to see him, especially for announcements and such. And he tried to communicate as best he could with us. But like I said, this is business, of course. And a lot of people are unhappy with a lot of things with Street Fighter V. And we hope that, uh, you know, that Street Fighter Six is as good as it can be, and you would, uh, Capcom would do whatever it takes, right? Including delaying the game. So that's pretty much it. What do you guys think about all this? Uh, there's a lot to think about. I'm sure we'll get more information as time goes. Um, personally, I'm 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 pretty happy with what I'm hearing uh, so far. I mean, I you know I don't want somebody to get fired from their job or leave their job, of course, but. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm scared. I'm always scared of Street Fighter Six kind of ending up as that, as you know, with Street Fighter Five again. There's a lot I want to do when Street Fighter Six comes out. There's a lot of stuff I want to work on, and you know, I don't want to end up with a, a content drought because I really like Street Fighter, especially for a fighting game. And I'm sure you guys, a lot of fans, would like to see your favorite character finally make it to the game if they haven't been released. And we want the community to grow. And we feel like, you know, it's kind of always half-assed because we're always playing catch-up with how Street Fighter V launched. And now we have a lot of opportunities with full cross-platform play. Street Fighter VI being releasing on every single console, you know. Uh, them making sure the game built from the ground up with proper netcode, right? Proper quality. We, we hope all those things because, like I said, the launch is the most important thing that they have to get right. And there's just basically no coming back from it. And we hope the new esports side is exciting 
with whatever they're trying to do with a team mechanic to help you know add more personality and have more of these rivalries between different uh regions around the world as well because they're already doing that with the street fighter league so i'm sure there's a lot of testing on that but yeah so yeah a lot to talk about guys uh let me know your thoughts on all of this uh if you guys are you know hearing this news as something positive or something negative i'd like to know keep the conversation going and i'll keep you guys posted whenever we get some more info on what's going down so yeah all right guys i'm gonna take off now don't uh you know don't be shy make sure to drop by my stream sometime and, and say hello still doing the retro streaming man still uploading those retro videos to the to the second channel and uh yeah i'll be posting some ranked videos and still messing around with cami and ranked uh with the mix box so you guys can expect some more footage on that this week okay guys take care peace